Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho and welcome back to another episode of Music Video Editing Breakdown. So in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at The Weeknd's Party Monster music video. A ton of you guys requested it. And in particular, we're going to be trying to recreate that really grainy, neon, and bright, flashy look that you see in the video and some of those warpy displacement effects. So credit to the original producers that created this. I think it was Brother, a design studio, and a bunch of other people that worked on it. Actually, it looks like Filthy Frank, as you might know him here on YouTube, actually helped shoot some of the actual shots that were shot on a VHS camera. So take that into account. And as always with these breakdowns, I'm just trying to give you guys an inspiration for some different workflow approaches. This is just my eye and my take on how you could create something similar. So before we begin this tutorial, I just want to say that if you're not following me on Instagram, then definitely go check me out. Live streams, DMs, reach out to me, whatever you want. But my Instagram's at Justin Odisha, so I'm looking forward to connecting with more of you guys on there. So I'm working all in Premiere Pro in this one, and I've got a couple of random clips from a parking garage. Obviously, it's going to help if you have the super neon colors already in your original clips, like in the original music video, but we're just working with what we have. So for these clips, the first thing we're going to do to start creating some color and building the effects onto them is go to our project media bin and go to file new adjustment layer. Now we can click and drag this adjustment layer over top of our track so that we can expand these effects over multiple clips or multiple portions of the project. So here's where we want to start building some effects. And one thing you noticed in the original video is a lot of that neon edges and that blurry grainy glow. So in order to do this, I'm going to go to my effects panel and start stacking a couple of effects. So if I open my video effects folder, there's actually a cool effect in the stylized menu called find edges. And if you're familiar with Photoshop, then you might recognize this filter or effect. It kind of finds the edges and gives you that outline of them. However, in this case, I'm going to press invert so that we only have the kind of neon glow of those edges. And you can see where we're going with this. We can apply blending modes onto this to stack them back on the original photo. But first, let's do a little bit more tweaking. Let's add some of that neon reddish color to it. So there's a ton of ways that you can add color. But in this case, I'm going to go to color correction. And let's go to the channel mixer. So I'll drag that on the adjustment layer. And here I can increase or decrease the values of each color channel. So I can increase the reds. I can decrease the blues and whatever combination I want to get whatever specific color I want. So I've adjusted my channels to get a pinkish red neon edge here. And then I'm going to go to the effects panel and this time go to the blur menu and add a Gaussian blur over this whole thing. So I'll just add a blurriness of just about 10 or 20 or 30 and I'll press repeat edge pixels just to be safe as well. Now you can see when I go to the top of the effects control panel and set the blending mode of this adjustment layer on something like color dodge or linear dodge, you see that party monster-esque effect with that glowing neon look. However, we still want to get that graininess on there. So I'm also going to go to the noise and grain menu and just go to noise and add that effect onto the adjustment layer as well. And since we added this effect last, it's not going to get affected by the Gaussian blur. So everything will still work in order. You could also apply this noise directly onto certain clips or on its own adjustment layer over top of everything if you didn't want it to be also on the color dodge blending mode. But again, it's all about experimenting with what might look cool for you. But at this point, we have a basic neon glowy effect as you saw in the video. However, the video is a lot more layered, textured, and complex than just having the same static effect over the whole thing. So here's where you'd actually want to go into different portions of this, like the opacity, the channel mixer, and click these stopwatch icons to toggle animation. And then you'd basically try to animate these effects as best as you can. So you could switch between reddish to bluish colors by animating the different values of the channel mixer and things like that or the opacity and you could cut and fade this adjustment layer over just certain portions of the clip that need that extra stylistic hit or whatever you want to do this is a pretty heavy effect so 
putting it over the whole project, it's gonna take a long time to render as well. Keep that in mind. Now, another thing you might see a lot of in the original video is blending different video clips into each other and somewhat strobe flashy effects. So let's say I have this clip of the kind of ceiling or the parking garage. I can place this clip over top of a track of the other two clips and then set the blending mode of this clip to something like screen, color dodge, lighten, whatever works well for you. I'll use color dodge and then I'll actually go into the Lumetri color panel this time and lower the exposure quite a lot so that we're, we're not getting too much color dodging, only the bright highlights of it. And now I can also go to the effects control panel and under the strobe light effect, I can add a strobe light to this blended clip and then make the strobe duration go pretty fast, I'd say, maybe 0.1 flickers on for every 0.2 seconds off, make it layer transparent. And then what will happen is that'll flicker the blending of this layer, which will also create some really cool crazy effects. And you could cut and chop this to be only on certain portions of the clip so you don't go too crazy with it. I do have a whole separate tutorial just on this strobe light effect that breaks down everything if you want to check out my channel for more in-depth analysis. But you can see basically how we're combining and building these effects. And we could go and blend a lot more things together, take our time with the transitioning and the sequencing and the fading in and out and keyframing of these effects to build our final cool project. But one last thing I've also seen in the video is a wavy and displaced warp that happens sometimes where everything just starts melting. So in order to do that right in Premiere, you can find the, there's actually two ways you could do it. You could do it with the turbulent displace or the wave warp. Again, you could add this onto adjustment layers over top of the clips, or you could just add it onto certain small sections of a clip that you want to warp. So when you add it onto those, then look in the effects control panel, you can adjust things like the wave height, the wave type, and the wave speed to adjust how fast things undulate up and down. And you can do things like pin the edges so that there's no black space if you pin all edges. You can also use that same turbulent displace or wave warp on any text titles to also kind of melt the text like you see in the original video. I have a whole separate tutorial on warping text as well, which I'll link afterwards. But that is an approach that I would take to create similar effects as you saw in the weekend's Party Monster video, all within Premiere Pro. So if you guys enjoyed this video, then definitely leave a like on it. Make sure you subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for future videos. Let me know what music videos you want me to break down next. Reach out to me on Twitter, Instagram, DM me the videos that you wanna see. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.